Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today is the auspicious day of Snanyatra. You have just completed the bathing of their lordships, Jagannath, Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev, and Subhadra Maharani. The, the three are one family. The family members came and took bath together. Today is actually considered the birthday of Lord Jagannath. So, it often happens on the birthday of the child, when the child is born, they will bathe the child, right? Yes. Actually, I travel a lot in China. So, one place, I visited in China. It was a very, it's a very dry area. You know, not like here. <laughs> Quite green and damp and wet, you know. So this, this is this one part of China where I was visiting, very dry. River is there, Huanghe means the yellow river. So, because it's so dry there, the people are not able to take bath. And they told me that actually in their whole life, they take bath twice. And they take bath then once when they're born, and second time when they get married. <laughs> it, it's, very, it's very dry. So, Anyway, that, that was uh, an unusual <laughs> situation. Not usually like that, but it's a, it was a remote region, it was a village area, you know, the people were away from civilization. There was no running water, there was only the river. So anyway, Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev and Swadra Maharani, they bathed today. And we said this is their, like their birthday. The Lord appears. When does he appear? Well, he appeared by the grace of Indra Jumna Maharaj. That Indra Jumna Maharaj desired to see the Lord. He wanted to see the Lord of the universe. And it happened that he was instructed that when three logs of wood were washed ashore, they should enlist a carpenter to sculpture the form of the Lord from the three logs of wood. And the only carpenter who could do it was a, a leper. This man with leprosy came. He was actually Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma is the architect of the demigods and he came in the form of this leper. And he came and he did the carving. But of course he went into a room and he, he, he said the condition is that nobody should disturb me. If anybody will disturb me, then I will finish. I will not do any more. And so they promised the car this promised this leper, no problem, we will not disturb you. And so he began he went into a room, closed the room, and Indra, Indra Jumna Maharaj and other devotees, they were all waiting outside. They were anxious to see the form of the Lord. And they could hear him chipping, you know, using the hammer and chisel as he chipped away at the wood. He, they could hear the sound. 
and it went on for several days. But then, after some days, there was no more sound. And Indrajumna Maharaj became very anxious. What has happened? Why is there no sound? Maybe he's finished. And so Indrajumna Maharaj went and opened the door, went into the room, and immediately the leopard disappeared from the place. And then Indrajumna Maharaj at that time, he saw the three forms of the Lord. He saw the Supreme Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev is the spiritual master, the representation of the spiritual master, and Subhadra Maharani is the Yoga Maya potency. So the three lords appeared, but Indra Jumna Maharaj was shocked because he thought, oh no, the forms are incomplete. There were no arms and no legs. And he was feeling very ashamed that I have disturbed, I have disturbed the work. And he's gone now and he doesn't want to finish the carving. He doesn't want to finish the carving. How will we ever worship the Lord in this form? But then a voice came from the heavens, a divine voice came from the heavens and instructed Indra Jumna Maharaj that it is my desire to be worshipped in this way. That this form of mine, which, in which it appears that I have no arms and no legs, and in which the eyes are also dilated, he said, this is a for my form in the ecstasy of love of my devotees. Lord Jagannath, and Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani, they all love the devotees. And they're in the ecstasy of love for the devotees. And it's caused their arms and legs to shrink into their bodies and their eyeballs to dilate, to become expanded, to become big. Just like something, you know, you may hear something which surprises you and you go, oh, you know, like that. So the eyes open up and so the same way when Lord Jagannath and Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani, when they're remembering the devotees of Vrindavan, at that time, they're in great ecstasy, in love of their devotees. And their arms and legs shrank into their bodies, and their eyeballs were dilated. So this is a manifestation of the love which the, the Lord has for his devotees. So we observe this every year. We have this Snan Yatra. Lord Jagannath is brought out from the temple and he is given the ceremonial bath. And then after being bathed, then it's customary that the three deities are taken into a private room. And they will remain in that room for some 15 days and during this time during that period of time the lord their lordship should be given special food because it's under it, it said that they're not very well they've caught some sickness you know just like if you bathe in this cold weather and if you bathe maybe with cold water, then maybe you could easily get sick. Anyway, their, the, their lordships are put into a room, a private room. And then they are served with special food. Just like if one of your children gets sick, then you'll take care of them. You'll give them special food. 
you give them some nice refreshing drinks which will help them to get their energy back and you give them food which is easy to digest and in this way Lord Jagannath and Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani they are treated like that that they are in privacy they're taken off of the altar there's no darshan and they're in the room they're not meeting any this is not very well of course during this period usually what happens is the lord will be painted again fresh paint will be put on his divine body and when it comes time for the Rathiatra festival, at that time the Lord appears refreshed. Particularly in Jagannath Puri, the deities there, the paint which they use is more of a, a it's more like a watercolor. And when they're bathed, then the paint will wash off easily. And in the course of their worship throughout the year, a lot of the paint also comes off. So they have to be refreshed. Just like, you know, ladies, they will put makeup on, you know, in the same way Lord Jagana puts on his makeup, you know, the paint which is going on his divine body. So, Lord Jagannath, this is his pastime. He's enjoying these pastimes for the pleasure of his devotees. During, during this period, of course, when the Lord is taken from the altar and there's no darshan, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was re he was staying in Jagannath Puri, and at that time there's no darshan anymore so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go he would go to uh, what, what was the name of that place? Uh, uh, Al Alarna. Al Alarna. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Mataji. Al Alarna, which is about 30 kilometers away from Jagannath Puri. And there's an ancient temple there of Alana, it's an ancient, it's supposed to be a Vishnu temple. It's a four-arm form of Lord, the Lord. Lord Chaitanya would go there and he would be in great ecstasy there. Because that deity of, Al of Alana, although it's a Vishnu form, it is worshipped with Krishna mantra. So it's unusual that it's a form of Lord Vishnu, but the priests will worship the deity with mantras addressing him as Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, of course, is two arms, but this is a four-arm form. So it is explained that actually this form of Lord Vishnu and Alana, this is actually the form of Lord Krishna when he's hiding from the gopis. We know that in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna would be in the, in the forest and with the gopis and dancing Rasalila. But sometimes Lord Krishna would enjoy tricks with them and he would go and leave them. He would go and hide from them and the gopis would be searching everywhere for him. And it's said that sometimes Lord Krishna would disguise himself that when they were, when they were looking for him, he would appear in a four-arm form. And so the gopis came through the forest of Braja and they saw Lord Narayan. They thought it to be Lord Narayan. And they came and they offered their obeisances to the Lord. 
And then they asked Lord Narayan, did you see Krishna in them? They were, they, although they had, they were able to have darshan of Lord Narayan, they were still thinking, we want to see Krishna. It is Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is the, the Lord of our hearts. And they came and they met Narayan and they offered their obeisances and they asked, can you tell us where is Krishna, which way? And, and Lord Krishna, who was in the form of Narayan, he tricked them and said, oh, he went that way. And the gopis would go running off to try to find Krishna. But when Srimati Radharani would come, then Lord Krishna would no longer be able to restrain himself. And he could not continue hiding himself in the form of Narayan. And his forearm form again became two arms. And he revealed himself to Srimati Radharani as Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we say Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come there and he is in the mood of Radha. He, is, he wants to experience this Radha Bhav because he knows the greatest pleasure is in being the devotee. Lord Krishna wants to enjoy and he always thought of himself as being the supreme enjoyer. But when he appeared 5,000 years ago, he saw that the gopis of Vrindavan were enjoying much millions of time more than him. And he thought, they're enjoying so much more than me. I should, I should be enjoying. How can I enjoy like them? And so therefore, he came in his next incarnation. He came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but in the mood of a devotee. He wants to cultivate the mood of a devotee. And he wants to cultivate that Radhaba. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at Alanath, he was in such ecstasy. He was in such ecstasy that even the, the floor, the marble on the floor, the stone floor melted due to contact with the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you can go there today, you can see how the floor is indented today from the, from the um, ecstatic feeling of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu would remain there at Alanath until the period is over, until it's time for Rathi Atra. And then when it comes time for Rathi Atra, then he would come back to Jagannath Puri and he would meet all the devotees who had come from Bengal. So in this way, we are observing also Snanyatra, the Jagannath, Jagannath date, and then you have to wait 15 days and then have Rathi Atra. And Rathi Atra, the Lord appears for his festival to bring him to Gundicha. So, do you also have Rathi Atra plans here? Yes. yes. I'm going to have Rathi Atra. Good. Yes. Very nice. So, of course, in Jagannath Puri, we will take the deities out and bring the deities to Nila, uh, to down from uh, the t main temple in Jagannath Puri, bring him to Gundicha, bring the deities down to Gundicha. And there the Lord will stay for seven days because that is Vrindavan. 
one particular occasion, it happened that uh, Pundarik Vijanidi came to visit Navadvip. So Mukunda Datta had told to uh, he told to Gadarha that there's a great devotee coming. You must come and meet him. So Gadarha was a brahmachari and he was very renowned. You know brahmachari sometimes, you know, that they won't eat anything, they're very thin and then they just have old cloth and they're very austere. So Gadarhar was a bit like that. He was very renounced and very detached from the material world. So anyway, he had Makunda Dana told him, great devotee is coming. You have to come and see him. Nimai Pandit has told us this man is a great devotee. Pundarik Vijanidi. He was a wealthy man. He was a landowner with the big estates. Sometimes we get Bengali people coming from the same village as where Pundarik Vijanidi came from. Even part one of the the land the land which he had it's been given to Iskon in Bangladesh the place where Pundarik Vijanidi was staying, that's been given to Iskan and we've, we've cultivated the land. We have a nice temple there now. So Pundarik Vijanidi, he, 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 because he was a wealthy man, he dressed very nicely. And he had many, you know Bengalis, many rings on the finger, you know, every finger some ring and some nice jewelry and he had also his hair also nicely you know his hair was all set and then on the table they put a lot of sherbet and different numpkins and different things for him to eat and to drink and Gadarhar Panda came there and he saw all of it and he saw that there was somebody fanning him also the peacock fan and Gadarhar came there and thought, huh, what kind of devotee is this? He's a materialist. He's a Vishayi. Look at this. So opulent. This is all sense gratification. So Gadarhar was thinking. He did not say anything, but he was thinking like this. You know, you know he was sneering. And Makunda Datta was watching and he understood his mind that, oh, he doesn't know that Pundarik is such a great devotee. So Makunda Datta began to sing and he began to sing beautifully, so beautifully, the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Aho bhakiyam stanakala tukkutam it's seen this very nice verse which is there in the third canto where uh, Uddhava is speaking about no, no one knows how merciful Lord Krishna is. That how, how could anybody be so merciful as Lord Krishna? The Kalakala Kutam this woman came with poison on her breast to feed the poison to Krishna. And Lord Krishna took her and accepted her and brought her as his, one of his nurses in the, to the spiritual world. So this verse is there in Srimad Bhagavatam and Makunda sang it very nicely. And when Pundarik Vijanidi heard the verse, he became stunned and his whole body, his hairs all stood on end, he felt herpulations, all kinds of ecstasy 
He fell off his seat. He rolled on the ground, crying and crying. The whole floor flooded with tears from his eyes. Everybody was... They had never seen this before. So much ecstasy, so much bhava was aroused in Kundari Vijani. He rolled on the ground crying and shedding tears for hours. Gadara was shocked. Oh, oh, what a devotee. He is a great devotee. And Gadarha thought, I have offended him. So then Gadarha reflected and he thought, I should take initiation from him. I will accept him as my spiritual master. So Gadarha went to Lord Chaitanya and he requested he took permission, took the blessings from Lord Chaitanya. And then he came back and he requested Pundarik Vijanini, you kindly give me initiation. So, on a suitable day, on, on, a, on, a, on an appropriate day, on an auspicious day, Pundarik Vijanini accepted Gadarha Pandit as his disciple. So Pundarik Vijanidi, he is recognized as being the incarnation of Maharaj Prishabhanda because Gadarha is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. Anyway, this whole initiation was initiated by Makunda Datta. It was Makunda Datta who sang the verse from the Bhagavatam, which aroused the Baba in Pundarik Vijani. So Makunda Datta would do like that. He would sing and he would give so much pleasure to Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya came back from Gaya, he had taken initiation in Gaya and then he had gone to Kanai Natsala. Kanai Natsala. Have any of you been to Kanai Natsala? Oh, your life is wasted. <laughs> you never went to Kanai Natsala. Kanai Natsala is the most amazing, mystical place. It's on the bank of the Ganges. It is said when Lord Krishna disappears from Rasa Lila, sometimes he will go there to Kanai Natsala. So it's a very special place. Lord Chaitanya came there after taking initiation in Gaya. And when he was in Kanai Natsala, Lord Krishna appeared to him. And, and then he disappeared. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was feeling the, the separation from Krishna. So after coming from Kanai Natsala, he came back to Mayapur and he was very transformed. He had taken initiation and he then had that experience with Lord Krishna in Kanai Natsala and he came back to Mayapur and he was very trans. He, he was not, no longer a scholar. Now he was the devotee. And Mukunda would sing different songs. He would sing different verses from the scriptures. And in this way, Lord Chaitanya would feel so much pleasure. However, Mukunda also had some difficulties sometimes. Because sometimes he would go to other places. He would not just only associate with the devotees, but sometimes he would go and associate with the Mayavadis. 
So it happened, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was exhibiting his divinity and he was sitting on the throne of Lord Vishnu for 21 hours. And during this time, he was calling different devotees to come and he would give them blessings. So they said to him at one point, what about Makunda? You should give Makunda blessing. Lord Chaitanya said, Makunda, I will not give him blessings for many, many, many years. Not for a thousand years. Not for a long time. And the devotees were all shocked. But Makunda was actually joyful because he understood that, oh, after a long time, I will get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was not willing to meet him now, but after a long time, I will meet him. So in this way, Makunda felt relieved. Lord Chaitanya was saying that this Makunda is a rascal. He comes with us. And he hit, talks bhakti, very good, yes, maha mantra, chant the holy name, very good. But then he goes to the mayabadis and they're talking from yoga vashishta, the goal of life is liberation. And he say, yes, mukti, very good, yes, very good, mukti, we should get moksha. And in this way he's talking so many things. So this makunda is a charlatan. In the, one day he's a devotee, other day he's a mayavadi. What kind of devotee is this? And I, so this is why Lord Chaitanya was chastising him. He wanted to purify him from this tendency to go here and there. You know, sometimes, you know, you get people like that. And, oh, well, anyway, wherever there's prasadam, we'll go there. <laughs> Anyway, wherever there's the chanting of the Hare Krishna man, it's all the same. People think it's all the same. We had experience. There was one person also in China. <laughs> you get everything in China. Uh, there was one person, there, a lady actually. She, she said, Lord Krishna told me to write the Bhagavad Gita. She said, the Bhagavad Gita is too old. She, Lord Krishna told me to write another book. So she's written another book. And she attracted people. Some, some, she, she got followers. And we would ask them, you know, why are you going to her? And they said, well, she chants Hare Krishna. What's the difference? It's the same. It's all the same. So people don't always understand that you may be worshipping Krishna, Radha and Krishna, you may be chanting Hare Krishna, but what is the, what is the mood? There are devotees and there are mayabadis. Mayabadis, they're also worshipping Krishna, but they're thinking, one day I will become Krishna and I won't worship anymore. So they have that thinking when they're doing their, when they're chanting, when they're reading Bhagavad Gita, they're thinking, one day we will become one and we'll give up all this. They're thinking the acts of devotion are the means to merging into the oneness. Their motive is to give up all the acts of devotion. So that is the Maya body. We understand that devotion is eternal. We're chanting Hare Krishna and we'll go on chanting Hare Krishna in the spiritual world also. Service to Krishna is eternal. We're serving, we're practicing to serve Krishna here and one day we will go to the kingdom of God and serve Lord Krishna there. We won't give up service to Krishna. We're always a servant. We don't become one. We do not merge into the body of the Lord. 
That kind of liberation is never acceptable by a devotee. That is, but that is what is taught in books like Yoga Vashishta. And Makunda was going and hearing all this stuff. So Lord Chaitanya chastised him that he will never get my association, not for thousands of years. Oh, Makunda thought, oh, oh, after thousands of years I will get his association. Oh, very good, I am so fortunate. And so when Lord Chaitanya heard that Makunda was waiting so patiently that he was ready to wait such a long time to get the association of the Lord, then Lord Chaitanya said, bring him here. And then Lord Chaitanya told him, don't go here and there, be chaste and stay and hear about Krishna through the parampara from the authorized channel. Don't just go here and there and everywhere. Be faithful to the spiritual teachers. And so in this way Makunda was rectified. And Makunda was a very dear devotee of Lord Chaitanya. That when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, it was Makunda who went with him. He was one of the few who went. Lord Nityananda, Chandrasekhar and Makunda. They went with Lord Chaitanya. Well, they didn't go with Lord Chaitanya, but they went to Kakwa. Lord Chaitanya himself, he swam across the Ganga to get to Kakwa. But somehow, Lord Nityananda and Makunda and Chandrasekhar, they also came there. Initially, Lord Chaitanya had told Makunda, I'm going to take sannyas. Makunda said, Oh, please wait for some more time. Let's have some more Sankir time before you take sannyas. So at the request of Makunda, Lord Chaitanya delayed taking sannyas a few days. Makunda liked very much to do Sankir time in the association of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they all went to Kat Katwa which is on the other side of the Ganga, and that's where the ashram of Keshava Bharati is. And Lord Chaitanya had his sannyas ceremony there, and all the paraphernalia was arranged by Mukunda and Chandrasekhar and Lord Nityananda. And then they all went off. First they went to Advaita Charya's house, to Shantipur, and they had festivals there for several days. Mother Sachi came with all the devotees. And then, at the request of Mother Sachi, Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Puri. Initially, he was going to go to Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya when he took sannyas, initially he wanted to go to Vrindavan. But he was tricked. Lord Nityananda tricked him and they brought him to Shantipur, to the home of Advaita. And then Mother Sachi came, and Mother Sachi saw her son. Oh, he's no hair anymore. <laughs> Very interesting. At one time, many years ago, BBC television, they came to our temple, you know, and they, they made some movie some program about devotees. So they interviewed one of the devotee's mother, you know. <laughs> they interviewed this devotee's mother, you know. What about your son becoming a Hare Krishna? And all she could say was, oh, my son, he used to have such lovely hair. <laughs> that was her her feeling that my son used to have such a nice head of hair. Now he's shaven head. <laughs> so Mother said she saw Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya also had beautiful hair. And of course he'd shaved off his head hair. And he'd given up the nice cloth which he was wearing to wear the clothes of a renunciate, a sannyasi. 
unstitched cloth. So Lord Chaitanya told his mother, well, I could come back with you if you, I made a mistake, I did it too quickly, I, I didn't think about it, I will come home with you. But Mother Sachi said, no, 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 don't do that. That will be worse. That will be terrible. She said, it's not good that you're a sannyasi, but it will be even worse if you give up the sannyas. Now you've taken it, now you must keep the vow. But please, Mother Sachi requested her son, please don't go to Vrindavan, because if you go to Vrindavan, it will be very difficult for me to get news of you. But go to Jagannath Puri. Jagannath Puri and Navadvip are like two rooms in the same house. Just like if you live in the same house with someone, you may be in different rooms, but you know, you know what's going on. So she go to Jagannath Puri. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya then left to go to Jagannath Puri, and Makonda Datta went with him, along with Lord Nityananda and Chandrasekhar. They, they followed Lord Chaitanya to Puri, and Makonda Datta every year he would come to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Chaitanya. To at the time of Rathi Atra, he would come attend the Rathi Atra. And he would stay there in Jagannath Puri to be with Lord Chaitanya and enjoy the association. So today is the disappearance day of Makunda Dada, and it's also the disappearance day of Sridhar Pandit. Sridhar Pandit is actually Kolaveksha Sridhar, meaning he was the one who was making his living by selling bananas. And he didn't have many bananas. He only had a few banana trees, he had a few bananas. He was making a very difficult living to support himself. But Lord Chaitanya used to go there as a young boy. He used to go there to see Kolaveka Sridhar. And he would always argue the price. You know, it's sometimes it's difficult to be a, a shopkeeper. Customers come, they argue the price. So Nimai Pandit would come and he would always argue the price that, oh, you're cheeking me, this is not a fair price. And Sridhar would feel so disturbed, he'd, he'd end up saying, Oh, just take whatever you want, just take, just go, just take whatever you want and go. And like this, the so Lord Chaitanya would come and tease Sridhar regularly, taking bananas and banana flowers from him. So Lord Chaitanya had grown up and he was sitting on the throne that day and he was calling people to come and get blessings. He told the devotees, bring Sridhar to me. The devotees said, Sridhar? Who is that? We don't know any Sridhar. They didn't even know who he was. Lord Chaitanya said, you go through the woods there, you're in the middle of the trees, you will hear from the cottage there, somebody chanting the holy name. So the devotees went there, and sure enough, they found there was this very broken down little cottage in the middle of the trees and inside that cottage they could hear a voice chanting the holy name with great faith and devotion. So they came in and they brought Sridhar, they brought Sridhar to see Lord Chaitanya. Now Lord Chaitanya wants to see you come. So Lord Chaitanya saw Sridhar and he said to Sridhar, he said, Sridhar, your house is in ruins and your cloth is all ragged and with holes. You don't even have a proper pot to drink water from. You're drinking water from this old iron and rusty pot. pot for faith, Mr. Stockton, with that dancer, I said that. Okay. Yeah. So, 
the Lord Chaitanya was requesting Sri what blessing can I give you? Do you want wealth? Do you want a kingdom? Tell me, what, what can I give you? Because I see your condition, it is not very pleasing to me. You're so poor. But Kolobeka Sridhar said, Oh my Lord, why are you testing me? Every day, whatever my income is, I will spend 50% to worship Mother Ganga. And in this way, I am happy. I am maintaining myself in my own simple way. The bird lives in its nest in the trees, and the king is living in his palace. Everyone is suffering and enjoying according to our past activities. Why I should change anything? Let me go on doing as I am doing. Let me continue to spend half of my income every day to worship Mother Ganga. So Lord Chaitanya very much appreciated the pure love of Kolaveka Sridhar. And it happened after Lord Chaitanya had gone to the Chankazi and had the debate with the Chankazi, when they were coming back, Lord Chaitanya brought the Sankirtan party past the house of Sridhar. And outside the house of Sridhar, there was this one pot which Sridhar used to wash his feet. It was an old iron pot with water. And Sridhar would come back after being out in the fields. He would wash his feet. Lord Chaitanya came there and he took that pot and he drank the water from that pot to show his respect for Sridhar. Of course, it was very painful to Sridhar. Sridhar did not like to see Lord Chaitanya drink that water. But Lord Chaitanya said, today I have tasted great nectar. This is the most relishable water. So today is also the day in which Kolaveta Sridhar departed from the world. A very dear devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are remembering them and we are praying for their mercy. We are Remembering also Lord Jagannath and how Lord Jagannath is also maybe not well after his bathing and we won't be able to have his oh, we can still have his dancing <laughs> today. Are you going to take them off the altar tomorrow? Are you going no. to observe that? No. no. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay, any questions? Anybody has any question? Um, you have explained us about uh, the ecstasy of the Lord by uh, when he was uh, with shrunken arms and legs and um, can you, is it possible to, to explain a little bit more about that ecstasy part because uh, we have heard of course a lot more times uh, about these 
wonderful pastimes and thank you very much for that. But what about his ecstasy? How how he um, he 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 is contributing that towards us and what what can we do um, to to uh, to grow more towards his way of ecstasy. <laughs> yes, we learn from the nectar of devotion that devotional service is on three levels. There's sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. Sadhana bhakti, devotional service in practice. Bhava bhakti, devotional service in ecstasy. And prema bhakti, devotional service in love of God. What can we do to come to that level of bhava bhakti? Well, one day we want to also experience that kind of ecstasy when we hear the verses from the scriptures, when we chant the holy name, we should feel some kind of ecstasy. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, it said, certainly that heart is still framed which does not feel ecstasy in spite of chanting the holy name so what can we do to come to that level of bhava well what we have to do is sadhana by practicing good sadhana one day it will happen one day you will come to that level you go on Hearing and chanting. Srila Prabhupada used to tell us that Shravanam Kirtan are the roots of the creeper of devotion. If we go on practicing sadhana bhakti, one day will happen. We will come to that level of bhava. We, we have to follow the process. As Lord Krishna says, Yeya tamam prapadyante tam stataiva bhajami. As you surrender <coughs> unto me, I reward you accordingly. So the more we commit ourselves faithfully to the practice of sadhana, strictly following the rules <coughs> and regulations, then the sooner it will be that we come to this, to experience this bhav. In the nectar of devotion, there's an example given about one lady that she danced all night to awaken ecstasy of love of God. She danced the whole night. So, of course, it doesn't mean that just because we dance all night, does not mean that we will also feel that same ecstasy. But that, that mood, that determination that I really want to come to the higher levels of devotion. So we have to follow. The, 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 we have to do sadhana. We have to faithfully hear and chant. And we have to read the books carefully. We have to worship Krishna. We have to chant the holy name constantly. We have to hear for a long time. If we go on hearing and hearing regularly, just like reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada said, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. We just have to be, we have to be reading, we have to be conscious. Read and hear and worship and certainly one day we will come to that level of Baba. Of course, uh, you can read also Nectar of Devotion 
the different characteristics of one who has achieved that level of bhava, that they're very attached to, it's not just only ecstasy in the body, it's not, there may not be that quivering of the body, there may not be the shedding of tears and so, but still one can be on the level of bhava. There are different uh, qualities and behavior of one who's on the level of bhava. One is that they're very attached to the chanting of the holy name. And they're very attached to the holy places. They want very much to be in the holy place. They're constantly meditating on the holy place. And they're very detached from the material world from the material affairs. They have no interest in these things. So there are nine different qualities mentioned there. You can read in the nectar of devotion, qualities of one who has achieved bhava and the different characteristics in their behavior, indicating that they're on the level of bhava. And that bhava, that is the seed of prema. And Mahaprabhu said, prem punarto mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. So to get love of God, we have to first do sadhana. We do good sadhana, gradually you'll come to bhava, the level of ecstasy. And that ecstasy is the seed of prema. It's like one ray, and then prema is the full, full awakening of that seed, that love of God. So we have to follow this process, and we don't know how long it will take. It may, it may come very quickly. It may take a long time. We have to desire. We have to want something very badly. Just like sometimes young people want something very much. Uh, there was a young person I knew. They wanted very much to get a scholarship to go to America to study in the university in America. And they were so dead, so serious, so committed that I have to get this call, that they memorized every word in the dictionary. Every word in the English dictionary they had memorized. So that when they came to take some examination, they knew every word. They, they were so committed committed I have to I have to get this so we should have that same kind of conviction that I have to get love of Krishna I have to come to Krishna I have to get this this stage of Krishna consciousness yes it, it's a challenge we are challenged we have to be very committed very determined that I want this very badly. Maharaj, uh, we have to go to the next We have part to go to the RT uh, and to the, to, the, to the program. Okay. Sorry that I'm... Uh, uh, no, it's okay. But I, I really want to hear more and more and more, but all, all the time limitation. Please, all right. please forgive me. So now it's time for RT. Yes. For RT. Uh, all days, they must work.